All right, so there's this point on a graph. And the important part is the, the word indirect variation. Okay, this is direct variation graph or direct variation equation or y varies directly with x. Okay. There's a specific meaning for direct, direct variation that y varies directly with x. What is that specific meaning? Uh, y equals ax. Y equals ax. If you can remember that, you can handle all this direct variation stuff. And y equals ax is just a really easy linear equation, right? It's y equals y equals mx plus zero. It's always with a zero. So the a is just your slope, so and your y-intercept is always zero. Okay. If my y-intercept is always zero, and this point or this uh, line goes through two six. What's the slope of the line that goes through? Three. Up six and over two, three over one, right? So just rise over run. Any direct variation equation, any graph of it, is always going to go through the origin. And so your rise over run can always be y over x. And that, that simplifies, then you know, that's, that's even nicer. So you can see that from here. Also, if I want to know what a is, I can just divide by x on both sides. Y over X always gives me A. Any Y over any X, well, that go together, not just random X's and Y's. But this X gives me this Y in this equation. So this X must get multiplied by something and give me six. But A is clearly three. And we take six over two, A is three. So the equation is uh, Y equals three X. Here's the graph. I've already graphed it, just trying to explain how y over x will always give you a. Other questions from that? Three? Yes. So remember, y over x always, every time, with direct variation only, not any equation, but direct variation, will always give us the slope, the a that we're looking for. Okay, so that was three. Let's take a look. This isn't any different from saying negative three comma negative five, right? Is it? No. No, it's not. I put in this x, I get out this y. Did we just do this? Yes. Yes, we did. Okay. What do the instructions say? They say graph as well. Find. Oh, what's the equation? Well, the so variable x and y are in the equation. Find, find, find y find. when x is twelve. That's what you do. Well, with direct variation equations, always y equals ax. So y over x always gives us a, so negative 5 over negative 3, that's 5 thirds, that's a. So the equation is y equals 5 thirds, uh, and what did it say, x is 12? Yeah. yeah, x is 12. So y equals 5 thirds times 12, cancel the 3 and the 12, we get 4, 5 times 4, it's 20. So when x is 12, y is 20. Okay. So that's uh, 1 to 18. See, look, there's the graph on screen. Yeah, you're right. Eight. You win. Is that enough for you? represent direct variation? If so, give the constant of variation. Okay. What does it mean that an equation is a direct variation equation? Does this look like that? Yes. Okay. If you look at the two different equations to see if they were direct variation or not, and this one, right? Really, in your face, it's direct variation. What is the, 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 uh, the constant of variation? 
when they say constant of variation, it doesn't come from A. A is negative A. Uh, is this a direct variation equation? Yes. All we need to be able to do is write it as y equals A times x. Can we write this as y equals a number times x? Yes. yes. What would that number be? One third. One third. Divide by three on both sides. Did you get one third times x? Yeah. X over three, of course. One third times x is the same as x over three. Um, how about y over x equals 12? Is that a direct variation equation? Mm -hmm. Yeah. How, how can we make it look like a direct variation equation? Multiply by x on both sides, you get y equals 12x. This is what it wants. This is one of the things that the, the, the writer of this problem is asking. We get a four thirds x. Y equals negative four thirds x. Write that equation. That's an important part. So they said y is negative 4? So y is negative 4, so what's x? Let's find out. How do we get rid of this negative 4 thirds? Multiply by the reciprocal. So we got negative 4 times negative 3 fourths equals x. And so we get cancellation. We get a positive because negative times negative is positive. Bad, is it? Ooh. 29. Well, look at this. It's the same. It's just different numbers. Yep. Right? Just different numbers. So skip it. Skip that. Skip that. Skip We need to times a number get negative one? Three times something is negative. Of course, you can always multiply a number times another number to get any other number you want. Yeah. Right? As weird as that number might be. So three times what would give you negative, negative one? one third. Negative one third. Now, does negative one third keep working? 
Six times negative one third. Yeah. Or divided by negative three. Could you yeah. Sim yeah. simplify? Oh, I did it backwards. Well, remember how I said y over x always gives a? y equals ax, so y divided by x always gives a. So you can just take every y and also do it this way, y divided by x. So you get the same thing as this, as this, as this, as this. Yeah. You always get back to one third. If we come over here, we try that. What's 7 divided by 1? Okay, so I need to get 7 every time. y divided by x, y divided by x, y divided by x. 9 divided by 2? Not 7. So no. Right? Two trials, and we have already shown it's not direct variation. That's all we're asked to do. Is it direct variation? No. Is there an equation to write? Of course it is. It's not direct variation. M39. take the depth and I multiply it by some a, I'll get the weight. Right? So there's some equation that 0.5 times this thing gives me 1,800. So I'll just use that. Right? You divide by 0.5, which is going to give me 3,600. Yeah? Yeah. So w equals 3,600 times d. I write an equation, just did that. I wrote the equation that relates W and D. Uh, then predict the weight on the roof when, uh, up here on is 1.75 inches deep. How do I do that? Take that guy, that's the depth. Plug in it. W equals 3,600. Someone should have done this already. Sorry, that's the right I write this. What? 6,300. Pounds. All right. Yes. So, if you yeah. say something varies directly with something else, is the first thing always y? Yes. So that's like, that's just how you can remember it. That's just how you can remember it. Yeah. Y, but it's saying this output varies directly with this input. If you go the other way around, you'll get a valid equation, but one that wasn't what the guy had in mind when he wrote that down. All right. Any other questions? No. Questions? So let's pass the homework on the piece of whatever there is that you have. I just do that. So this thing here. Oh,
Gallons cost 44.46. Okay, so 13 gallons times a, a, a is 44.46. What do I get when I take 13 and divide it into 14.46? So I can find a. writing equations and lines. I have a little bit of uh, trouble with that. Not too much, but enough to revisit it. Um, all right. So all I know is that, these, that this line goes to these two points. So what can I find out about this equation? What's that? The slope. The slope. Yeah. yeah. Oh. <laughs> You're stereotyping. Uh, we can find the slope, right? Y2 minus Y1 over X2 minus X1. Negative 4 minus negative 1 over 4 minus negative 2. Negative 4 plus 1, that's negative 3. 4 minus 7 plus 6, so negative 1 half. All agree? Okay. Um, and then we know a Y and an X, so we know the, the slope. So we can just plug it into here, solve for b. Or y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So I do y minus, I'll use this point right here, y minus negative 4 equals m, which is negative 1 half, times 
times x minus, which is that we're using negative 4, so we use 4. That's y plus 4. So distribute this negative 1 half, that's negative 1 half x plus 2 when you multiply negative 1 half times negative 4. Subtract 4 from both sides. Negative 1 half x minus 2. Piecewise function, yeah, it's not surprising that we some troubles with that because if you're not fully like uh, just grasping onto this idea that a function is input and output, piecewise functions can give you some trouble. But if you can bend your mind a little bit and think in terms of this function takes input, turns it into output, that's what it does. That's like the realm that piecewise functions is in. Let's look at it another way. I think actually we were able to do this already in this class, but uh, let's go ahead and actually just grade in yours. Do you guys, I, I thought to do this with you guys before the other classes. I think you guys did pretty well, a little better. Okay. But we'll again, we'll look at this. First of all, what does it mean to write for x into this function, right? But this function is made of two functions. So if I want to put 9 into this function, it either goes here or it goes here. How do I decide where it goes? Yes, it depends on if it's greater than negative 6 or less than negative 6. Or you stole it from there. Okay. Um, Right, so what about 9? Is it bigger than negative 6 or less than negative 6? Bigger. Bigger, so it's going to go here. Right? So uh, 5, 6 times 9 over 1. Is 1, get the cancellation here. We get 2, we get 3, so we get 15 over 2 minus 2 over 2, right? Minus 1, you do the same as minus 2 over 2. So we get 13 over 2. Okay, that's fine. Good. How about f of, well, let's, let's, let's look at what that means. What does it mean? So here is the certain axes. All right, so we have this point at 9, 13 halves. 9 there, 13 halves. That's 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13 halves. Did I say that's at 9? You can't tell from the word. 6 and a half. 6 and a half. <laughs> well, I wanted to count up the halves because that's something that, uh, that I think people miss. Yeah, this come out to be six and a half. Uh, so I want to plug in six. What do I do? Put it in here or put it in here? In the bottom one. It's still bigger than, right? If I put six there, it is true. It is bigger than negative six. So I want to use this function. Five sixths times six over one. It's one, cancel. We get five minus one, we get four. Agreed? Okay. So we put in six and we get out four. And say we want to do f of zero. Where's that going to go? What? Negative one. Oh, we already know it's negative one. We know it's going to go into this function because it is bigger than negative six. So we just know it's going to be zero, negative one. Okay. I want to plug in negative six. Which function am I going to use now? Oh, let's see what I say now. Oh, right. Negative 6 is equal to negative 6. So we still are with this function. So that's 5, 6 times negative 6 minus 1. So we get negative 5 minus 1, negative 6. So negative 6, negative 6.
What? What's up? You said what? What did you say? Nothing. Full circle or open circle? Close. Because Close. Because Close. we just plugged in negative six and, and that is the function we're supposed to use for negative six. Okay. What about f of negative seven? Where's that gonna go? Yeah. I don't want to plug in negative seven into this function. How about f of negative, what would you want to plug in this function? into this function because negative 9 is less than negative 6. It's less than negative 6. Negative 4 thirds times negative 9 over 1 minus 9. So you're canceling here 3, 4 times 3 is going to be positive. 12 minus 9, that's 3. Plug in negative 9, get out. 3. Negative 9. Straight line at negative six. Okay. Well, here, right there, that's a point on the graph. That's a point on the graph, right? Yeah. You know, was it like this? Like this? Was it like that? What is it like this? Like that. How will we know? Curves off. Plug it in. Plug in what? Six point one. Okay, so you're saying that we, like you said, you said negative 6.1, right? Yeah. We can't plug negative 6 into this function. Because negative 6.1 is, is less than negative 6. What if we plug the negative 6, and 6 into that function? It, it, it would be for the other function. It would be yeah. for the, yeah, well, we're supposed to put negative 6 in the other function. So it doesn't work, yeah. But let's, let's, just, let's just do it and then talk about it. If you ask for forgiveness after we do it. Uh, negative four thirds Four. times negative six over one minus nine. You get a positive eight minus nine. Negative one. It's on your So negative six comma negative one. We're all good? Yeah. You got it? Yeah. So I plug negative six into this function, which I'm not supposed to do. But you can still find the general area where so the next point. Is. Yeah, I know that, that if I were just graphing this line, it would get right here negative six, negative one. I'll just let my cursor rest right there. Just make a circle. Oh. Right. So what is an open circle? It's just a, a guiding object. It's not really a point on the graph, but it, it is where this left side of the graph is going. So I can put an open circle right there. It's like a point, it's not a point. It's just the thing to aim for, okay? Telling you that that's where that function is getting close to, okay? But once we get to x is negative six, we jump down here to this graph. That's what that's all about. This graph, our line. Okay, so it goes through all those points. This goes through that point, right? That point and approaches this point as if it were a point. There's our piece left. Just as a, as a visual, and I like to see those x values, they are over here. To the left of negative 6. So this blue or teal highlighted area, that stuff, that is, that's all the places where x is less than negative 6. So that's the domain of negative 4 thirds x minus 9. That's where that, that function reigns, right? That's its domain. And the word domain fits because domain means all of the inputs, right? All of that area to the left is the domain of that top function. Yes? Um, are we going to lose points on the test if we don't shade? No. In fact, shading would be kind of hard. Like, it, it only works well here because it's colors. It'd be confusing. Yeah, I would. That's yeah. why I really like shading. Yeah. Like, 
So maybe it's maybe it'd be worth pointing out this shading is 100% different from the shading you would do in an inequality. Yeah, because that shading actually is a bunch of points. That's what that shading is. This shading is not. This shading is just like, yeah, hey, look over there. It's just drawing your attention. Okay? So I hope I didn't confuse anybody with that yeah. before I thought that was yeah. Was that confusing? Yeah. Okay, so that shading, yeah, that shading is different from inequality shading. Uh, that shading is just just a color code, and, and you can. I'm trying to get you to see what my mind sees. Okay, this stuff over here is less than negative six. This stuff over there. I'm gonna say that. I'll highlight it. This stuff over here. Right. This is all the stuff where x is greater than negative six. You don't want to get too close to you. Greater than or equal to negative six. And again, that shading, very different from shading for inequality. And yellow is a good choice, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, yellow. Yellow. <laughs> it's so shallow. All right, here we go. Next. That was a good question. Oh, yeah. oh, thank you. Yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. Next. All right. Absolute value. What does absolute value mean? Oh, just oh. the whatever it is. The distance from that to zero. The distance from zero. The distance to zero. No problem. The distance from zero. Yeah. Okay. Sarah said it. What? Sarah said it. I said it at the same time. The same time. Okay, with the time. Boom. Two people. <laughs> Two? I took my <laughs> 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 you got the points. Steve's a nice to Steve. All right. So let's just say the absolute value of some mystery cloud of stuff. Okay. Don't put a question mark in there. Question mark. Say that's equal to 16. Well, then what could this stuff be? Positive or negative 16. Negative 16 or positive 16. This stuff in the cloud. <laughs> Could be 16. This stuff is in this cloud. We don't know exactly what makes it up, but we do know whatever it is. It could come out to be negative. It's a question cloud. Because if I take the absolute value of 16, I get 16. Absolute value of negative 16, I get 16. Okay? Another way to look at it is stuff. If I don't like this stuff, I'll write the absolute value. How do I get 16? I can get it two ways. I can take the absolute value of 16. That's what could be that, that cloud of stuff. That cloud of stuff could be negative 16. And that's how it would also get positive 16. So that's how we, we set up these equations. Well, 16 equals negative 16, right? Equals 16. Could be this. Or it could be this. That's why we set up both those equations. Now, whatever is in that cloud of stuff, that's what gets set equal to 16 or negative 16. It could be x, could be x plus 2. It could be 3. Minus four thirds could be anything. That stuff inside of the absolute value could come out to be sixteen or negative sixteen. Could be this. Could be this. Could be anything. We said it. Let's say x plus two equals sixteen. X plus two could be equal to negative sixteen. Those are two equations that we solved. Now, it's the same idea, even though we have variables on both sides. Okay. This stuff could be equal to exactly the same thing as this stuff. Or the opposite of that could be equal to whoops. You're going fast. <laughs> the opposite of all of this. Let's take a look at this over here. Wait, I don't know if this comes out to be. But well let's switch the three X over. What are we kind of assuming here? They can be identical to each other as long as this is what? Positive. This has to be positive. Exactly. Or so the thing that this absolute value is equal to, it comes out to be, it would have to be positive. That 5x minus 11 part would always have to be positive. Included here, this would have to be positive. But if it's positive and we take the negative of it, then this could be equal to the negative of that number, the opposite of that number. Because when you take the absolute value, you get the positive. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'll solve for x 
I'm going to go negative 2x equals uh, 2x equals negative 1. That's a possibility. We're going to have to check it. Don't forget to check. Okay, I'm going to distribute the negative there on the right side. 3x minus 13 equals negative 5x plus 11. 8x equals 24. X So now we have to test them because perhaps, perhaps we have found a value of x that would make the right side negative, which it can't be. Okay, so let's see if we, if we plug in negative 1, 5 times negative 1 minus 11, that's negative. That's, that's negative uh, 16. That's saying that the absolute value of blah, blah, blah equals negative 16. That can't be. It has to be equal to positive, whatever it is. That's the way absolute values work. So we reject this possibility. We'll try 3 now. 5 times 3 minus 11. 15 minus 11, that, that's big enough. So we subtract 11. We don't go negative. We just go to 4. So we say that's a good one. <gasps> I got it right. <laughs> And that is all. Are there any questions? Four out of twenty-five. What you have is uh, a cake. You can read it, but I'm telling you, it's top thirty selling vehicles in 2013. Well, I didn't get it, but it's, I, I trusted source. Provided this to me at the teacher conference. Yeah, no, no, no. Um, <laughs> <laughs> former professor no, of mine. No, Megan, it's $30,000 plus $15. $30,000, $15. Why, why would you just add the extra $15? It, it matters. Cost what it costs. You know. <laughs> well, okay. Hey, let's please pay attention so that you are not hurting for time at the end of this. What time you waste? One less time we have at the very end. Try to squeeze in the last piece of information. Okay, so let's look at these numbers. For instance, I'm just gonna stay over here. Uh, how about try to try to figure out? Let's say I, I told you what the power of some the horsepower of some vehicle was. You think given all this data, maybe a little bit of time, you could take the, the amount of horsepower that I give you of some car and make some realistic prediction about its uh, fuel efficiency on the, in the city. Yeah. So maybe there's a relationship there between those two things. How about uh, if I told you the power, do you think you could make a good guess at the torque? Yeah. Probably. How about if I gave you the price? You think you can make a good guess at what the weight of the vehicle is? No. 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 Not too good. Maybe a little bit because, you know, more, let's say it, it, it's heavier because it weighs, uh, you know, it has more stuff. It's got more technology. It has more metal, maybe. It's it more metal. Yeah. costs money. So there might be some kind of. Okay, yes. If, if a car is it's heavy, it's going to cost more. Uh, the the materials are going to cost more, but then you say what the technology is, all that kind of stuff. So maybe a little bit? No. And also, it's going to be a little off. The Dodge Ram is heavier than the uh, Ford Explorer, but the Ford Explorer costs $5,000 more. Yeah, because yeah, you're, you're not trying to get like, like, like just get work done. Like you're trying to so tow it around your kids. It's not, not the size it's of the size of the quality of the ingredients. Yeah, exactly. Better ingredients, better pizza. Papa John. So. If I can get some egg for that. <laughs> 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 I gave a hammer so, I'll do a spot on. <laughs> let's take a look at some, like how could we see it? How could we see if there was some, some relationship between these two? Write an equation. Try to see if we could write an equation. Oh, you could try it. Graphic. Graph it. Let's look at some graphs. Let's just cut right here. Ooh, there's going to be some big graphs. Uh, All right, so this is. Oh, you already graphed it. What is that dot over there? 
What is that dot? This is fuel efficiency <laughs> city versus fuel efficiency city. That's, that's, that's the Prius. Is that a Prius? That's the Prius. Oh, yeah. I think it is. All right. Let's look at price versus weight. That's what I asked you about. Does it seem like there's a relationship there? Only slightly, maybe. A little bit in like a couple groups, and then like over there it's all. Yeah, there's, I mean there's some group, and yeah, they, they seem yeah, to be no. kind of, but these are just probably similar similar cars that cost about the similar price. You it's know, a coincidence. Or whatever. Probably. Uh, probably. It doesn't seem to be very well correlated. Right? Right. So this would be not very correlated. Co related. No. Wow. Oh, okay. that just blew my mind. Get to break one down. <laughs> okay, power well, versus there's Oh yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a very strong relationship. So we would say that these are highly correlated. The silver auto in that series of four. Correlation is. Yes. Yeah. Is there a correlation? Yeah. yeah. Is that correlation different from this correlation? Yeah. In what way? It's inversely, it's inversely correlated. Okay. We'll talk about what that, what to call the different correlation. What's that? Okay, you win. That's what I said. Invert. What did you say? Invert correlation. That's what I said. She's a liar. Don't give me a You should take her. I said invert correlation. You lie about eggs. Yeah, but this one's sketchy. It's going to break open when she catches it. Yeah, as soon as you touch it. Give her the pink one. You should throw a real eggs at us. That'd be so funny. All right. All right, so you look at the highway versus weight. It's what we call a negative. Yeah, but it's cool. Is that what the call out there? Negative. Would you agree this is? I'm looking for it. Inverse. Inverse. Let's see, is it? Is it fuel efficiency high? Yeah. Is it weight low? Yeah. That's why you always got to check. Good. Is that the Prius one? Yeah, that's the Prius. Superior car. Yeah, that's why I don't Hey, so it's negative correlation, but is it as highly correlated as this? Oh, no. It's injured correlation. What? Oh boy. Negative that's just correlation. Not, not correlation. No correlation. No correlation. No correlation. We'll have to say rose correlation. correlation. Seemingly. Seemingly. No rose correlation. Seemingly. It looks like a rose that like goes like this. So rose. That was a bit above that F series. Rose okay. correlation. I can see it. Um, <laughs> no, it's it looks like an explosion. Once it hits that yeah. point, it's kind of. All right, so our calculators can definitely show us how correlated these things are. But we don't all have calculators. I want you to use, I want to, to, to show you in a way that the highest percentage of people have access to. Okay, I have a video about how to do this on your calculator, so you can watch that if you have a calculator. I can help you with that, I can show you that. But what most of us have, if I were to compare people who have access to calculators at home and access to the internet at home, more people have access to the internet at home. Right? Okay? So I'm going to use an internet tool to show you how to find, uh, well, something. But first, we have to talk about what, what it is that this calculator is going to tell us, what it's going to show us. Um, it's why, when I look at this and I ask you if it's very highly correlated, you just say yes. Yes. Yes, okay. They look like they follow some kind of a pattern, specifically this pattern, a linear pattern. Do you think there are things that are correlated that are not linear? Yeah. What if we just have a big group of something? Can you just have a big group? A big group? Uh, of something. Like pressure. <laughs> 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 like on a graph and it was just, um, <laughs> 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 I'm going to do chemistry stuff. Hey, somebody's talking and actually participating. Four. Forward two. Forward, Forward two. Not back one. Back, back one. one. <laughs> so, see how that is like a group of ah. things here? Uh -huh. So, would that be, so would that is, be a correlation? Let me ask you, is, is, is the clustering of points 
What we're looking for? Like they're just no. close together in spots? No. no. We're looking for all like on a line. Yeah. On a line or follow some pattern. Yep. Okay. So linear would be the most basic. Okay. It seems like it would be linear, like say for power and torque, right? They were really yep. highly correlated. Oh, we went the wrong way. This one? Yes. Very highly correlated. Very like almost making a line just if you just put it through the points, right? You can't wow. quite get a line to go through every point, but I bet it would hit a lot of them or get really close. Yep. Um, but is there some other data that we could look at that would would make a pattern and, and seem predictable, but not be a line? Parabola. Okay. Is there data that would get close to a parabola? I have no idea. I don't know, that wasn't enough anymore. Could you get one of those? There was like two of that, and then it was just all the points on like the top mm -hmm. side of the curve. I don't know. Yeah, I think it's yeah, a problem. Yeah. Yeah. yeah? The practice problem that we did today, the function of x thing. Oh, yeah. Could you get if it's something? less than or function of x thing? Yeah, what, what's that called? The piecewise function? Piece 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 yeah, piecewise. Piece piece no, those yeah. are just like two lines right. that meet. Okay. How about? What line equals x? Oh that would be linear still. Here, let's, let's jump uh, over to a new page and, and talk about this maybe. Like, what if I um, say the, the side of a, the side length, the measure of side of a, a square field. And right? what's in this field? This field is full, let's say, of graphs. Could it be and rabbits. Yeah. I found them rabbits. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> let's, just, let's just go with this for a second, and if you can think of another one, then you bring it up. So in this field, there's just some grass that uh, some farmers' cows are going to eat. Okay. So I give you the side length of a square field, and here I give like the uh, the weight of all the grass. Do you think there's going to be a linear relationship there? Yeah. Um, probably. Sure, yes. Okay. If the grass yeah. spreads yeah. evenly. Yeah. Like if there's spread. not the grass patches, could be in patches. It could be in patches. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Let's, let's, let's imagine that, you know, <laughs> the grass is fairly consistent. It may vary, like, how many you, how much grass you see per square inch or whatever from field to field. But it's fairly consistent. That's what's going to cause it to be a little bit off. It's just going to be kind of close to a pattern. It's not going to be exact. I think that would be... Here. Let's say that uh, one... Let's say feet. There's a one, a one foot by one foot field. Grass. Not a field. That's my house. Uh, That's a uh, half. Okay, half a pound. All right, let's go with one, because let's just make it easier. Okay. One, say one pound. So two would be Very highly Wait a minute. I'm Wait giving you the minute. side. One side. Right, this is x and this is two y. Two would be four. Two would be about four pounds. Yep. So it would be one Because we're finding the area of the grass. Oh. Three. Or the weight is more directly related to the area, right? More one for one almost. Yep. But three is how much weight? Nine. 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 Or around nine. Oh. Is this linear? I see how it is. Yes. Oh, it's not. It's parabola. It's more like a parabola, right? If I were to. If I were to go out. Hey, everyone. Still talking up here. Everybody just keeps going and just like losing their minds. Okay, so if I were to go out to uh, a field and, and harvest all of the, the grass and weigh it, in differently sized fields. I'm going to find not a linear relationship between the side length of a square field and the weight of grass that I get, right, or straw, or whatever it is. I'm going to get more of a square, right, a parabola of the graph. Now, I'm not going to get exactly one exactly four exactly nine, because like we said, the, the grass may be patchy in places, but it's going to be close. And if we were to plot all that data from several different fields, we're going to get more of a curve and not so much a line. But if I were to give you like the area instead of the side length, the area versus the weight. Linear. Now those are two dimensions that are 
the same, right? They're, they're like on the same dimension. The area and the weight, like they vary right along with each other, even directly. Yeah. It's probably some multiple that I can take the area, multiply it by some number, and get the weight. All right. So, but our data, we're going to concentrate on linear, linear correlation, and the not the curve of best fit, but the line of best fit. Right. If I were to draw a line a that I feel fits this data, right. I would say something like this. Yes. Yeah. Is that it? Did I find it? Yep. Yeah. Could it be yeah. this? No. Why not? Because it doesn't have a negative. No. Zero has a negative zero. No. Has a negative one. no. In, in analyzing data, no, your line does not have to go to zero, zero. Even though. A car that has zero power would have to have zero torque. You can't have torque without power, right? Exactly. But that's, I understand there's, there's that reality there, but the data that we have, first of all, a car that has zero horsepower, it's like it's not a car, it's a rock. Right? <laughs> to talk about it would be nonsense, to try to talk about a car that has zero torque or zero power. This rock so goes so fast. this line, Maybe it's like that. You know, it's slightly off of zero, zero. Even though that doesn't make sense, the thing about the line of best fit is it makes sense within your data, okay, for the most part. Within the data that we've collected, if you start trying to project for space shuttles, right, they're like all power. It's just horsepower, it's just thrust, it's just moving, there's not really any torque. They're not Torquing on it. Torque is a twisting. Okay. <laughs> 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 you get your tongue twisted there. Torquing. Here, when we when we come back from our work, I will show you how to find this line. Okay, it's not eight minutes, right? Chill out. Okay, <laughs> so what we're going to do now, we're going to go to a, a website. All I did to find this website was Google. Let me tell you what I Googled. This is great. We had a break. Please. Thank you. I Googled linear regression boy. calculator. Right. This is like, I looked for a few of them, the one that I, I put a link to is uh, it's really easy. It's really easy to follow and plug in your data and then have it find the equation of the line of best fit. I love calculators. Yeah. So, what we're, what we're looking at is, why, why linear? Because we're good lines. Because this, this correlation seems to be linear. If we were going to fit it to a parabola, it would be a quadratic regression. Okay. What does what does regression mean? I don't know. What does it mean to regress? To go backwards. Go back. Kind of go backwards, yeah. So I take all this data and kind of boiling it down to Danielle. What did she do? Is that for regression needs to go backwards? It needs to go backwards. It means to go from your data back to the line that, that fits it the best. Okay? It's calculated. You know what calculated is. That's, That's not a calculator. <laughs> I call you later. <laughs> well, first of all, let's talk about uh, this line that I drew. <laughs> do, you think that's, do you think that's the line of best fit? That's it? That's the one? Yeah, probably pretty close. Yep. Probably okay, close. close but it's got to go down. Hey, I just drew it by hand, by just eyeballing it. Do you think that's it? No. Not exactly. Not exactly. Okay. Probably pretty close. If I, if I had a, a, a computer plot that line, it'd probably be pretty close. But just by eyeballing it, you're not a very good chance of finding exactly the right line. Okay, but say that I just guess, which is part of getting familiar with linear regression. Your homework when I ask you to guess at the line of best fit for some simple data, not nearly 30 points of data, maybe five or six. Okay, And just guess. Just draw it. And to find its equation. Can we find the equation of this line? Yeah. yeah, by a little bit more guessing. Okay. We have drawn this line, and we're gonna have to guess at what about this line? Some points on the line, right? This is gonna be the way that we're gonna find the equation of the line. We're gonna find a couple of points. So 
You don't want to just grab any old point anywhere. You want to pick one that you can make a fairly good guess at. Let me get closer to it and see. This one, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Right, 50 comma maybe 51. It's not quite right on the grid, but it's close. I'll pick this one. You know, 250 comma 248. Nice. And this one is 47. 50 comma, it looks like a little more than this, 50, 51. <laughs> what do I need for the equation of a line? Y equals Slope. Slope. 248. <laughs> Minus 51. Over 250. Oh, man. Minus 50. Okay. This is something over 200. Over 200. <laughs> 248 minus 51 real quick. One what? Well, 97. 97. <laughs> um, does that simplify? Uh, not at all. How? Yes. So, uh, there's our slope, 197 over 200. You know. <laughs> and then we just need to use this slope and plug in a y and an x and solve for b, or plug it in the slope intercept form, or sorry, the point slope form, solve for y in that case. Whatever, that's, there it is, it's as simple as that. It's as simple as the equation of the line that goes through two points, two points that may have. So that's what you're gonna do if you're guessing, but if you want to find exactly the right equation, we're gonna need a, we're gonna need Something either a lot of time to, to run the calculations ourselves, or some technology. It's we're gonna go the technology route. Yeah. Yeah. What is this? Okay. So you can see where you put x and where you put y. If you want to put in more x's and y's, you just click add more. So we enter some data. Um, why don't you give me the data for the power and torque for the first five? Is it five cars? Yeah. Yeah, I'll see the 3 2 Just 302. 302. And the torque? 278. Next? 285. 305. Uh-huh. Yeah. That was 905. <laughs> oh, you typed that one wrong. Whoops. 305. <laughs> Next? Okay, uh, 170. 185. Mm -hmm. 381. Mm -hmm. 305. Oh. 269. 269. Okay, All right. Now, obviously, if I put in all of the data, <coughs> it's going to give me a different line than the one we're, we're about to find right now because it you know, moves things around a bit. But, did we? Can we? Okay, let's add one more. Let's add the Prius. All right. 98. 98 and 105. Wow. No. Now, what is the Prius going to do? It's going to make it more accurate. It's going to make it more accurate. Yes. Yes. Let's take a look. We have power versus torque, right? Right there. Oh, great. <laughs> the ad came up. Okay, we had power versus torque. Where's the Prius? Right at the end. Very last. Okay, so does it seem to be in keeping? Okay, it's extending the graph. How about the Prius in other cases? No, this rest like, is really screwed. Well, how about this one? No, hold on, hold on. This one. It's probably it's, it's not too good of that. It's like... What do you, you can tell that's a Prius out there, right? It's yeah. <laughs> if I try to draw a line that goes through all of this stuff, what's the Prius doing to, like, here's my guess for the line, right? the laws of gravity. But the Prius is, like, pulling my line toward itself, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like it's it's kind of throwing things off. You know what we call that? Card. With that point that's just out there, kind of seemingly not following the pattern. Mm. Call it an outlier. Out. It's yeah. lying yeah. out there. Oh. Kind of by itself, an outlier. Okay. A loner. <laughs> a loner just doesn't quite fit, right? You would think that a car that has this much fuel efficiency would weigh about this much but it doesn't quite fit the pattern of all these other cars, okay? So, well this doesn't have anything to do with power here. But in the, on the scale of, of power versus torque, or sorry, that's price versus torque, of power versus torque, it seems to fit. It seems to fit the pattern. Yeah, Okay. it's gonna make it more accurate. So, it may make it even better. So what I have to do is hit calculate. 
All right. Slope, y intercept. There we go. Um, well, shoot. Where's the graph? Where is the graph? Where is the graph? Hmm. Thank you. 